Welcome to the Economic Countdown. Panic buying is getting worse among fearful consumers as we approach Christmas and New Year's Eve celebrations. Since the blowout of the current epidemic, we have witnessed several rounds of panic purchases that have wiped out shelves in the grocery stores and prompted supply shortages all over the nation after new lockdowns started to be enforced in several states. People have rushed into the stores one more time to stock up on essentials, fearing strict movement limitations. It could be a dark winter now. As festivities get closer, buyers have been massively stocking up on holiday-related goods, even causing an unexpected shortage of Christmas trees. Due to the sudden and incredibly high spike in demand, but while some are being driven by panic, others have already exhausted all their options and are being driven by complete desperation. That's what we're going to discuss in today's video, so stay with us and remember to like, comment, share, and subscribe to our channel to keep updated with the next chapters of the economic collapse. Just as we've seen over the past nine months, the final run of 2020 is also being marked by a series of dramatic events. As case numbers continue to climb, authorities have enforced new rigid restrictions that have been triggering consumers to resume panic buying. Goods have been flying off the shelves, and this time around, their purchase are not limited to just toilet paper and cleaning supplies. Wine, meat, dairy products, pasta baking mixes, and several holiday-related products are disappearing from store shelves quickly, although some major food retailers such as Kroger, Giant, and Target have affirmed to have enough goods to meet the demand. In multiple locations, stores have started to reinstate purchase limits on high-demand items, which has sparked anxiety among shoppers, according to the Washington Post. Despite big retailers' claims that there are enough supplies to go through the end of the year, it's essential that they impose restrictions to prevent buyers from hoarding and ensure there will not be another round of shortages. However, due to transportation issues, supply shortages are expected to occur during the winter and prices are projected to keep soaring in the months ahead. We saw a major demand spike in March and April, and we are certainly seeing another wave now as case numbers crest again across the country. This time around, it's a little bit of everything. Cleaning products, toilet paper, cold and flu medicines, shelf-stable food, pointed out Nick Green, chief executive of Thrive Market. Walmart CEO Doug McMillan has disclosed that even though the situation is a lot better than it was earlier this year, when stores were not prepared at all and were surprised by major supply chain disruption, it's still disappointing to see as many out-of-stocks as they have in consumables right now. Data released by the Washington Post has described that while there was hoarding of inexpensive pantry product like dried beans, flour, yeast, pasta, and rice, the co-leader of food and beverage for global law practice, Nixon Peabody, Janet Garrett, has stated that other food sectors could be more in demand as well if strict restaurant closures and shelter-at-home orders linger for much longer. As we're still in the middle of a ravaging health crisis, it's only natural that consumers keep stockpiling. Favorites are paper and cleaning items, and since they've been limited and unable to get as many as they would like in stores, they've been resorting to online shopping to get what they want. You walk into Costco and there are signs that say limit one toilet paper package per customer. Panic buying has already begun, although not to the extent that we saw before, said Kathleen Hanak, a PhD, who teaches supply chain management at Villanova University. At this stage of the crisis, the panic buying trend has extended its range to several different products. One of the more surprising items that is flying off the shelves is Tupperware. Tupperware in some regions is almost tripling in sales during the holiday season. People want to bake, and with more people at home, baking products have become popular as well, according to reports. According to the National Retail Federation, the sale of holiday decorations, candy, and gifts is expected to rise this year, too. But as some of the most preferred items are already scarce on the shelves, prices for holiday items are also expected to rise based on the latest Euro U.S. Bureau of Labor Statistics data regarding consumer spending. Sulem Gia, Ph.D., who teaches marketing at LaSalle University, affirmed the cost of numerous goods significantly rose in November. He said the consumer price index is up 3.6. The price index from meat has gone up over 7% in the last 12 months. Also consider that the costs have gone up for them in terms of keeping the meat factories running and keeping up with the cleaning. This current round of pandemic stockpiling tendencies is being led by Americans' increasing fear of what might happen during this dark winter, as well as a need for comfort. By relying on traditions to shift the focus from the tragic events we've experienced this year, we're going through a period where we feel a lack of control. 
Christmas spending is something that we feel allows us to control the atmosphere around us. However, for some, this growing desire of running away from the spectrum of dis disconcerting news and upsetting circumstances has become a little too extreme. And now they've been trying to overcompensate by celebrating the holidays to the max. Consequently, and very unexpectedly, a Christmas tree shortage is being registered across the country. Keith Yoder, the owner of a Christmas tree farm, said that he's never seen anything like it. He compared it to the rush on paper towels and toilet paper. There was a mass of people coming in with trailers from food to cleaning products and even Christmas trees. Panic buying reflects how the current epidemic and its collateral damage has impacted the mindset of our population. Americans have been experiencing symptoms of depression, anxiety, and obsessive compulsive disorders like never before. The uncertainty about the future and lack of control about what might happen next is leading people to overreact in an attempt to safeguard themselves from the harder times that seem to be approaching. Considering that many Americans had their lives completely turned upside down during this crisis, their minds seem to be in a constant state of emergency, and having some sort of abundance around them may help restore their confidence that they will be able to make it through the crisis. A recent analysis on changing behaviors during the current recession has outlined even the shift from outdoor dining to home-cooked meals. And the transfer from office environments to working from home may affect the population's confidence that they will indeed stay afloat. While confined at home, people tend to pay a lot more attention to missing items than they did before when they knew they could get whatever they needed whenever they need it, pretty much anywhere. Panic buying is just an exit some found to cope with the disruptions brought by the crisis. In any case, those who can still work from home and buy their own food are on the most fortunate side of the spectrum. Last week, applications for unemployment benefits surged again, which provides a clear indication that the most recent business shutdowns are triggering fresh job losses. The Labor Department said that initial jobless claims rose by 137,000 to 853,000, and not considering the seasonal adjustments, the figure has increased by almost 229,000. This means that the labor market recovery will be held back if lockdowns continue. In every cycle of restrictions, more jobs are lost, and fewer jobs are added back in, according to Chief Investment Officer at Crescent Capital Management, Jack Albin. This rise in claims is testing investors' optimism. While investors are rightfully celebrating the vaccines, I think they are not set up to endure two quarters of daunting economic news, he said. But the most brutal difference is that while mass layoffs affect investors' prospects of obtaining more profit, for workers, it affects their prospect of obtaining enough to eat. And in turn, they stock up on what they can to enhance their comfort. On the other hand, millions cannot afford to have two meals a day. A new survey conducted by market research company found one poll that roughly four in 10 Americans report they experienced food insecurity for the first time in 2020. About half of them revealed they have struggled to afford food while 37 affirmed to have skipped meals so there was enough food for their children to eat. On average, there was a 60% increase in those seeking help from food banks across the country. In some counties, one in two children are now facing hunger. The crisis is here and it's nationwide, said Kate Leone, America's chief government relations officer. She revealed that some of their clients are former volunteers and even donors. Leon also stated, we think that about four in 10 of the people we are serving now are new to needing charitable assistance. On the same note, Emily Slazer, food sourcing manager of New Orleans Second Harvest Food Bank, disclosed in an interview that the pantry's volunteers are seeing clients who are sleeping in their cars, arriving on site at two or three in the morning, sometimes even the night before. It's just a stunning and heartbreaking visual to see so many members of our community who are hungry she lamented. To make things worse, the high level of demand is pushing several pantries to an unavoidable food cliff, which means many of them are about to exhaust their resources. Additionally, with the expiration of federal aid programs set to happen in a couple of weeks, millions more are likely to suffer from the desperation and anguish of not knowing when it will be their next meal. The worst side of this crisis is not portrayed by the growing economic panic among consumers, nor investors' lack of optimism and a crippled economic outlook, but by the roaring of the empty stomachs of our citizens that could never imagine that they will be left facing this tragic reality so suddenly. 
As the economic deterioration deepens, we will be headed to more challenges as we enter 2021. Thank you for watching the Economic Countdown. Remember to like, comment, subscribe, and share. God bless America.